Hello everyone. Today we will study tautomerism. Tautomerism is a very important part. It is a inherent part of almost all the reaction mechanisms. Whenever we will study reaction mechanism, whenever we will study the mechanism of any kind of reaction, tautomerism somehow will appear somewhere in some part of that mechanism. So before we get started with the reaction mechanism, it's very important for us to clinch with this tautomerism. Tautomerism is also called as cationotropy. It is also called as prototropy. Cationotropy means movement of cation, prototropy means movement of a proton that is H plus. Mostly in kind of the, the tautomerism that we deal with that is prototropy that means it is movement of H plus and we, we are going to see how H plus move from one atom to another. Uh, suppose to get started, suppose I have acetone in my system and I added a small amount of base into it. Now as we have uh, seen before this base is a nucleophile it, it will go and attack to a site where there is electron deficiency where there is some plus charge polarity and uh, the plus charge polarity that we can find is on this carbon because of electronegativity difference electrons are shifted towards oxygen uh, but we also know from prior discussion that this OH- is a weak base and it does not act as a nucleophile so it does not come and attack on this carbon because the problem with this carbon is it is a carbon of C double bond O which is the strongest double bond of organic chemistry so it does cannot come and attack uh, this carbon straight away this cannot happen because when this happens my C double bond O is broken and my C double bond O breaks only at the cost of very high unstability in the reagent. Had I, if I had R minus here then that reagent would have been very unstable. To get rid of that very high unstability I can sacrifice the very high stability of C double bond O. But the very high stability of this C double bond O will not be sacrificed for a stable, relatively stable nucleophile. So this cannot happen. This is not an option here. So what we are left next with is it can remove any H plus from this carbon. That's the only thing that ca that can happen and that's the only thing that will happen. So this base will come and abstract the hydrogen from the carbon adjacent to C double bond O. When this happens then a negative charge is developed at the carbon adjacent to this C double bond O and this OH minus abstract the H plus and is removed as H2O water. Now we know there will be a resonance here if we draw the resonating structure then the negative charge that is on carbon will get migrated to oxygen which is the more stable position for that negative charge. So we have resonating structures like this. Now that most of the charge will be residing at the end of this oxygen and nothing else can happen here because I have not taken any other reagent it's only base and nothing else so if I have a solvent as water then water will give the hydrogen to this O minus and that will result in OH bond or else if, if there is no water then this water that has been removed in the first step this will come to give back the hydrogen which it abstracted in the first step. So this hydrogen from the water will be given to oxygen that will result in formation of a enol. Now here we had ketone. Now this C double bond O having R on both sides this is ketone. We say this as ketoform because of this ketonic group. This form is called keto form. Here we have an alkene because of C double bond C. For that alkene we have ene and here we have alcoholic group 
that is OH so for that alcoholic group we have all all for alcohol so this is called as in all form having alkene and alcohol this is called as keto form that is that was having only ketonic group so this is tautomerism this specific kind of tautomerism is called keto enol tautomerism where you have conversion of this keto group to this enolic group that's one thing second thing is this reaction involved the three steps basically the first step was acid base reaction in which the base comes and abstract hydrogen from this position resulting in this anion that's the first step that is acid base reaction the second step was resonance the charge through resonance went to the most stable position that was oxygen in this case so through resonance the charge was delocalized and went to the most stable position that was step number two step number three was abstraction of that hydrogen back which was abstracted in the first step now the thing to be noticed is in the first step this OH- abstracted hydrogen from carbon in the third step the other atom not carbon any other atom in this case this is oxygen this is abstracting back the hydrogen which was abstracted prior previously from carbon so basically what has happened is base came and abstracted one hydrogen from atom A negative charge developed on atom A that negative charge delocalized and went to some other atom atom B and that atom B abstracted back the hydrogen and formed a bond with that hydrogen so a uh, hydrogen has been transferred from atom A to atom B so it is prototropy movement of proton or cationotropy movement of a cation and this is called tautomerism this is the basic idea of tautomerism that hydrogen that H plus will be moving from one atom to another in this case it is moving from carbon to oxygen so this is called keto enol tautomerism because when hydrogen was on carbon it was ketonic group when hydrogen is on oxygen it is enolic group so this is uh, what keto enol tautomerism is now to recapitulate step number one acid base reaction step number two resonance and movement of hydrogen to most negative charge to most stable position and step number three is acid base reaction again so that's what keto enol tautomerism is the significance of this tautomerism is huge that in due course of time we are going to see how this is why this is so important but for time being this is what keto enol tautomerism is and let's look at the stability of these two tautomers form now these are called these are called tautomers like we have isomers tautomerism can also be considered as a uh, dynamic isomerism because these two keep on converting from one form to another so uh, these are called tautomers and the phenomena is called tautomerism now this is the keto form and this is the enol form as we have se seen a moment before now i am interested to tell you about the relative stability and that's what you have to learn in tautomerism that's um, one important aspect to know about the relative stability of tautomers now this is keto form because of this ketonic group we call it keto this is enol form because of this alkene and this alcohol this is enol now as we know that ketone has C double bond O which is the strongest double bond of organic chemistry so because of that there is stability in this keto form from when you switch over from, to, from keto to enol you have C double bond C the C double bond C instead of the C double bond O and there is no match in the stability of C double bond C and C double bond O C double bond O is much more stable than C double bond C so you are breaking my strongest double bond and you are giving me a weak double bond so there will be a gap in stability keto form is considered to be much more stable than in all form because of C, C double bond O another thing is there is oxygen here having two lone pairs and there is a pi electron cloud and there will be repulsion between this pi electron cloud and the electron of this oxygen 
here we don't have any kind of repulsions as there is in enol form so that repulsion further degrades the stability of enol form